Hi everyone, I hope you've had a wonderful week. I have definitely had a week that has not gone at all according to plan. Our car broke down rather dramatically at the start of the week, so we've been carless for the majority of this week. And I had been hoping to go a few places and film a reading vlog in my more typical style, but that just wasn't on the cards for this week in the end. I'm crossing my fingers we're getting our car back today, especially as we're meeting a friend in York who's just on a flying visit from Geneva and I'd be really sorry to miss that so I hope that works out um, but I've also had to change my plans for YouTube this week so what I'm doing today is I'm going to share a book haul and a stationery haul with you as well. I've got some stationery lately that I think you'll really love too and I've been sent some lovely books from publishers at the start of this month that I wanted to share and of course I also bought some books in June that I haven't had a chance to tell you about yet so I wanted to share all of those amazing books with you as well. As always, I'll be linking all of the things that I talk about, including all of the books, in the description box down below. I, as you may know, always link to Blackwells, and I use Blackwells really for two reasons. One, because I have a lot of fond memories of the original Blackwells shop in Oxford. It's such an amazing bookshop. And also I use Blackwells because they offer some great shipping rates for if you're ordering internationally which I know a lot of my followers are so I wanted to point that out because people always ask me about where they can get books or if they have trouble finding books in Canada or the States for instance this is really why I link to Blackwells because they do offer good international shipping and you'll be able to find the books that I talk about linked in the description box. If you'd also like other ideas for where you can buy books and make sure that you've downloaded my free best bookshops of Britain guide, I'll link to that down below as well. There I list not only amazing independent bookshops that you can visit in the UK but I also have a section on where you can order books online from, both secondhand books and new books. So do check that out if you don't have it already. But let's get on with my book and stationery haul. I'll share the stationery first. I've ordered some really pretty cards lately that are so lovely and summery, I couldn't wait to share them with you. So the first artist I want to tell you about is Felicity Buchanan. I bought three of her card packs. This is one of them. I love the bright yellow lemons with the pretty blue bow. Bows are a bit of a motif in her artwork that I've noticed and I just love them. I think this is such a pretty summery card. And I also got her little seahorse card another lovely one for summer i think that's just such a sweet design i didn't find this from her original shop it had sold out there but i found it from a different shop i think called originals of london so i'll link to that if they're still available um, but her own felicity felicity buchanan shop is really well worth looking at too i love her cards and I also got this really sweet set of cards by her as well. Strawberries, again with a bow, just perfect for summer and I think that's so, so pretty. So I can't wait to send these cards and also use them in my photography. And speaking of cards that I like to use in my photography, I often use little postcards like this um, in my sort of book flat lays or book photo photographs generally because I think they add so much interest and prettiness to my photos and these are some postcards that I got recently. This artist is Emily Ainsworth and she's just done really pretty floral postcards. I love those sweet peas in particular. Um, I think these will just look very nice in my photos and I can't wait to use them. So I thought these were lovely. And then I actually found these cards um, by looking at the photos of one of my followers on Instagram. Her name is Skevula Gordon. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Apologies if not. 
but Scavula has some beautiful artwork that she creates and I've enjoyed following her on Instagram and I was really excited when she just launched her online shop and started offering some cards for sale and I chose a little selection. So I bought this one which won't surprise anyone because it features Jane Austen books and she is my favourite author as well as some very pretty florals and a lovely mug. So I couldn't resist that and I went for bookish and floral cards generally as you can see I also chose this one that features Jane Eyre. This is how the cards arrived very prettily um, wrapped with a little bow like that. I went for this one as well which shows lots of different tea caddies and types of tea, also very me. And then another bookish floral one featuring the secret garden. So I just loved how bright and floral and colourful and bookish these cards were. thought they were really charming. Um, so that's it for the cards that I found. Then I wanted to show you these planners. So I've got a daily little to-do list planner, which is really useful. You just tear off the pages day by day as you go. This is by Lucy Miller, and I love this pressed floral pattern that she has. It's really, really pretty. Um, I also got her weekly planner. Again, you just, pair, you just tear off the pages as you go. And I'm really enjoying using these already, helping me to stay organized. But what I really love too is that um, Stars Mead uh, book binding uses the same pressed paper that Lucy Miller creates um, for one of her commonplace book designs. You may have noticed that this was my latest giveaway on my Instagram account, just a smaller version of this commonplace book. It's so pretty and so summery and I just thought how fun it was to get the little matching planners from Lucy Miller herself. So I was really thrilled to have that as a little set. Um, let's move on to books now. So, in my last video I was telling you how much I was enjoying Uncle Paul by Celia Fremlin. I finished it and really loved it. The ending is a bit bizarre, I have to say, and I really didn't see that twist coming. It took me by surprise, uh, but that was fun because I like to be surprised. So, Yes, I really enjoyed it and it made me want to read more by Celia Fremlin. So I also got this book, The Hours Before Dawn, which Faber Books brought out again quite a while ago, I think. And this sounds really good too. It's about a new young mother who is severely sleep deprived and is just desperate for sleep. And I think she is so tired that she starts to question her own reality and her own instincts a bit because she has a very bad feeling about um, her and her husband's new lodger. And there's some kind of mystery around this person that's built up through the book. That's all I kind of know of the premise. And I'm really looking forward to starting this because it does sound like it'll be another real page turner. So I'm excited to get to this one. And then speaking of mysteries, I was really thrilled to be lucky enough to receive some new books from the British Library. Um, they sent me both of these. It's part of their British Library crime classic series. Suddenly at his residence, the new Christiana Brand mystery, and then The Wheel Spins by Ethel Lena White. So you may remember, I'm a big Christiana Brand fan. I've read two uh, previous books by her that the British Library republished. Green for Danger, I absolutely loved. And then Death of a Jezebel was, I think, the other one. And I enjoyed that one too. So I'm really looking forward to reading a third book by her and was delighted to be sent this one by them. I know I'll be reading that soon. And then this is one that my mum was excited to get. I think she read it quite a long time ago because we don't have a copy anymore, but she loved it and she thinks I'll enjoy it too. So I'm really looking forward to reading this and especially knowing that this book was adapted for film by Alfred Hitchcock as The Lady Vanishes, which I know I've seen and really enjoyed. Although I have to say, I don't remember the plot at all now. So I'm sure this will all come as new to me when I read it. 
It sounds like it's actually a really good summary mystery too. I think the main character suffers from sunstroke when she's on a train platform and she's helped by another female traveler. And when she wakes up, this woman has gone and no one else recalls this woman being there. Um, so there's, there's some kind of mystery. I love mysteries that involve trains as well and journeying. Um, so I think this sounds right up my street and it does sound like a really good summer read as well. So I'm excited about both of these. I can't wait to get to them. And then um, the British Library Publishers also very kindly sent me their most recent uh, their most recent books in their Women Writers series. So this one is One Year's Time by Angela Milne, who is the niece of A.A. A. Milne, the author of Winnie the Pooh. And I believe she only ever wrote one book, which apparently when you've read this, you wonder why, because it's meant to be very good. Looking forward to getting to it. And then um, these two books really interest me because they both seem to be about home in some way. They have a real theme of, of home and what that means to women in particular. That's Sing Me Who You Are by Elizabeth Berridge and The Home by Penelope Mortimer. I'm intrigued by these selections. The Mortimer especially is a bit later than a lot of the books that the British Library Women Writers series have been republishing. A lot of them are from the interwar years, but I think the home is from the 1960s, oh no, 70s even, 1971. So I'm intrigued by this one and they both do sound really good. So all of these I'm excited to get to. And then um, Penguin Books kindly sent me this book, Beautiful Star by Yukio Mishima. And this sounds really intriguing. It says, a tale of family, love, nuclear war, and UFOs, Beautiful Star tells the story of the Asugi family who come to the sudden realization that each of them hails from a different planet. Father from Mars, mother from Jupiter, son from Mercury, and daughter from Venus. This extraterrestrial knowledge brings them closer together and, convince, and convinces them that they have a mission to find others of their kind and save humanity from the imminent threat of the atomic bomb. And this was originally published in the 1960s. So this is another re-release of a sort of forgotten classic. And it sounds very intriguing. It's meant to be funny as well. And I just am really looking forward to it. I love that gorgeous cover as well. So I'm definitely excited to read that one. And then another book I received from the publisher is The Thousand Year Old Garden, Inside the Secret Garden at Lambeth Palace by Nick Stewart Smith. And the History Press kindly sent this to me. I'm excited to read it because as you may know, if you've watched my London vlogs, I absolutely love the Garden Museum in London. That's one of my favorite museums in the city and it's located right next to Lambeth's Palace. And I've never been to the garden, unfortunately, I've never had access to the Lambeth Palace garden, but it just sounds like a remarkable one, full of, hi full of history. And um, this is a lovely memoir written by one of the gardeners there. So it sounds like just the kind of book I will enjoy and again will make quite a nice summary read I think. So I'm looking forward to this. And then I bought this one recently, I have to admit, purely for the cover. I mean I do love the book Hotel du Lac by Anita Bruckner. Um, I went to school in Switzerland right by Geneva. So that kind of part of Switzerland and on the border with France is very much part of my childhood and the book is set in that area. So it's always meant something to me because of that as well. And the edition that I have has a really boring, not very attractive cover. So when I saw that the artist Luke Edward Hall, I think that's his name, yes, Luke Edward Hall had uh, done a new cover for the Penguin Essentials series, 
then I just had to have it. I think that's really lovely. I want to reread this soon, actually. I believe it starts at the end of September, so it's quite a good autumnal read. So I have to remember to put this on my pile to read in September. But I'm really thrilled to have such an attractive edition of this book. Really, really thrilled with that. And then I got this new release from Grey Ladies Publishing, which is another little independent publisher. And they republish a lot of, forgot of forgotten classics, both children's books and adult books. And this is their latest release, Tea and Hot Bombs by Lorna Lewis. And this is an incredibly rare book to find on the secondhand market. I've been trying to buy it for years and years and years. Both my mum and I have been looking for this book for so long, we could never afford it. So I'm absolutely thrilled that Grey Ladies have republished it. It sounds really good. It says, Jackie Lawrence joins the emergency mobile canteen corps to fill in time until she is old enough to join the WAF and is immediately in the thick of the London Blitz. Bombs dropping, London on fire, buildings collapsing, ack ack gunfire. And in the middle of it all, Jackie and the other volunteers drive to the London docks, to bomb shelters and to railway stations, overflowing with troop trains and serve tea and cake. Ordinary sorts of women keeping calm and carrying on. I think this sounds like a fascinating read and I can't wait to finally get to read it. So really looking forward to that. And then I got the new book by Sabine Adeinka, which is Time to Shine at the River School. Last year, I read the first one in the series, Jummy at the River School, and really loved it. I'm so pleased that another one in the series is out. This is a children's book, but you know how I love boarding school stories, and this is about an elite boarding school in Nigeria, and it's just a really sweet series. The first one was lovely and the second one I'm sure will be really good as well so I'm looking forward to getting to this one too and then I also ordered this book Yellow Face by Rebecca F. Kwong which has been chosen as the Reese's book club choice for July so I'm hoping to get to this very soon it's a a kind of literary thriller by the sound of it, which really appeals to me. It's about a young woman whose friend dies dramatically, I think, in front of her. And her friend is this very successful writer, but she decides to steal her latest manuscript when once her friend has died and publish it herself. And then all sorts of things start going very wrong by the sound of it. So I'm really intrigued by that premise and just think, and I think this sounds like it will be a real page turner. Then I also ordered this book that just came out recently too, and that's The Bookbinder of Jericho by Pip Williams. This is set, I think, just at the start of World War I, and it's about the women who worked at Oxford University Press at that time. And it sounds like it will be a really excellent read. Apparently it connects a bit to the first book that Pip Williams wrote called The Dictionary of Lost Words. Um, so I might try and read that one first, but I'm really looking forward to this too. And then I got this little book, J the Jane Austen Escape Book by Marjolaine Bastin. I have to admit, I mainly got this for Marjolaine Bastin's lovely illustrations, which I always so enjoy. I love the way that she's illustrated a lot of classic books, including a lot of Jane Austen books lately. So I got this mainly for the illustrations, but it's quite sweet as well. It's like a, it's almost like, um, it's a little puzzle book. Elizabeth Bennet wakes up in a carriage and with her like reputation in ruins or something, and she has to find out what's gone wrong and win back the respect of her friends and Mr. Darcy. Um, so it's just these little scenarios that are set up and you're meant to help Elizabeth Bennet navigate. Um, Regency England <laughs> essentially. So I think if you know a young reader maybe in particular who's just discovering 
Jane Austen and loves Pride and Prejudice and this would be really fun but it's quite a fun book for any uh, any Jane Austen fan I have to say and then I also got this new book by Laura Cumming Thunderclap a memoir of art and life and sudden death I spoke about this in my last video so I won't say too much more about it but I really love Laura Cummings writing I think she's just so good I love all of her writing about art and I know that I'm going to enjoy this one as well and then a new cookbook that I got is this one, Comfort and Joy by Ravinda Bogle. I have to admit that I really bought this book for the dessert section. There's some really, really good looking puddings in the book that I really wanted to try. But having got it, there are so many recipes actually that look really great. And I saw Diana Henry raving about, I think the chutneys in particular, um, which made me want to try those too. But yeah, the puddings in this also look really good. <laughs> so I'm definitely excited to try some of those. And then I also got just a few secondhand books that I thought I'd share with you too. I ordered some cheap paperbacks of um, books by Sean James. You may remember that I read One Afternoon by her, which was one of the latest Persephone books to be republished. And I really enjoyed that and it just made me interested to try some of her other books. So I ordered these secondhand paperbacks um, just for very cheap. You can see they're a little bit tatty, but I'm looking forward to giving them a try. I don't, I mean, they probably won't be as good as one afternoon, but I'm still just keen to try them because I did enjoy that one a lot. And then I've been wanting to get Mossy Trotter by Elizabeth Taylor for a long time. This was the children's book that she wrote. I'm a huge fan of her adult books, of course, but I didn't have a copy of this and I really wanted one so I just again got a secondhand paperback of it and then this is one that um, I really wanted as did my mum um, Verily Anderson wrote Spam Tomorrow which has been republished by Dean Street Press and is really good and that's actually the first in a series of memoirs that she wrote um, about her life and her family's life during the Second World War and so on. And the second one in this memoir series is called R Square. So I've um, recently been able to get a copy of it, which I'm really pleased about. But if you've never read Spam Tomorrow, that is happily still in print. So I will put a link to that in the description box. And then I found this lovely old edition of Alice in Wonderland, which I couldn't resist because it has some really beautiful plate illustrations in it. There's one that you can see, and it's just a very special old copy. Um, so I was really thrilled to find this one secondhand. Really excited about that. And then I also picked up this old biography of Jane Austen, a portrait of Jane Austen by David Cecil. This is just the sort of thing I do tend to pick up if I see reasonably priced books like this secondhand because I am such a Jane Austen fan and I do like to collect quite a few books, obviously by, but also about her. And this is a biography I didn't have, um, but it was one I wanted and there's some nice illustrations in this one too. So really thrilled to have got that. So anyway, that completes my book and stationery haul. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you've been having a wonderful weekend. I hope you have a great week ahead. And I do hope also that we'll have a car <laughs> and we'll be able to get out and about soon as well. Because um, there are some places I want to be able to go and to film. So crossing fingers for that. Um, thank you so much to everyone who pressed the super thanks button on my last video. And also for all your lovely comments. It's lovely to be back. YouTube being and yes thank you a lot for all of your lovely words and support they mean so much and I'll see you again next week goodbye